Hey everybody, check it out. It snowed again last night. Four days ago it was 60 degrees here. All of the snow that we had melted. There was tornadoes about 50 miles south of here and now I get more snow. I'm sick of winter. I want summer to get here. I know you're all saying, quit your whining and bitching. Let's get on with the review video. You know what? I think that's a great idea. This video is not going to be anything real elaborate. I'm just going to do a little tank tour of my 20 gallon I've got here. And then at the end of that, I'm going to have a little response to a message that I got from ZZMan33 about uh, some star polyps. So let's have a look. This is a 20 gallon lawn. I've had it set up for quite a few years now, and it's been doing pretty good. It's basically just a tank that I throw any like extra little frags that I've got or just stuff that I don't want in any of my main tanks anymore. I just put them in here. I'll go over some of the equipment first and then show you what's inside the tank. Uh, it's a power compact light on top here, a little actinic and a daylight bulb. On the back is a Remora skimmer. It does an okay job. Overflow, this tank isn't drilled unfortunately. Goes down to the sump down here. It's just real simple. Got some rock over here, some ceramic media, bubble trap. It's a mag drive five pump, returns it back into the tank. Got an automatic top off system which as the water level in the sump here goes down, this float right here senses it, automatically adds uh, fresh RO water to the sump. All right, let's see what we got in here. Uh, rose bubble tip anemone with a maroon clown. There's no bubbles on the tips because the maroon clown thrashes around in it all the time. I got that little clown fish when it was a little baby from somebody in my reef club. He doesn't bite me yet but I'm sure he'll get more aggressive as he gets older. Some blue mushrooms. Up above here we have a split clone from the anemone down here. And it just moved itself up to the top of the tank there. The clown holes in both of them, but basically likes the big one down in the bottom here. Got some striped mushrooms in here. Some nice zoanthids. Just some palithoa polyps. There's a button polyp in the back there. Like I said, this is basically just a lot of stuff that I had in other tanks that I didn't want in there anymore, in a bigger tank, and put it in here, let it grow a little bit, trade it off for something else. This is a elephant ear mushroom. Up above here I've got a piece of egg crate that's glued on to a Magfloat algae cleaner. Got some zoanthids on there. I keep them separated from the rest of the tank so that nothing encroaches onto these rocks here. And these were all just like two or three little zoanthid polyps at one time, and some of them have started to spread out pretty good. And down below here, this is Briarium. It's all off on its lonesome here. There's a reason for that. Uh, this is a response to ZZMan33. He was asking about uh, star polyps. And this is often sold as green star polyps, but not all green star polyps are Brarium. This is the last little bit that I have from a large colony that overtook a 120 gallon tank that I have killed off smothering a lot of zoos and several other corals that I had in there. This is a very fast grower. You really got to keep it in check. Uh, it encrusts 
And this piece I'm going to trim off here. I'm going to show you uh, what's all involved with it. You have to keep it all on its lonesome like this or it'll take over a tank in a short amount of time. A lot of people like it. It looks cool underneath the actinic lights, but you really have to watch it. From time to time I have to go in and trim off pieces that are growing. I'll see in a second here. This is actually two pieces of rock here. And this briarium, it has like a rubbery skin that it starts to send out and it attaches to just about anything. It uh, doesn't like being in the sand, but if it gets in contact with glass or any other hard surface, it attaches to it quite easily and will rapidly spread. And you can see right here is the rubbery mat that I'm talking about. And as this grows off of this piece of rock here, from time to time I go in and trim it off. Now surprisingly there's not a lot that has branched off, but I just take a tissue scissors and just go around the edge and just trim it off. That way it keeps it small. And this doesn't hurt this coral at all. This stuff is very resilient. That's really all about the that there is right now to trim off of here. If you did want to propagate this, all you do is take a stone, or this is a snail that's still alive, I just grabbed it off of here, but take an empty snail shell, anything, piece of rock, just place it right onto the briarium like that, and in a few weeks time, this will cover up whatever you put on there and you can pull this off with a razor blade, trim it off and you've got a new piece. This is really fast growing stuff. I'm not going to say it's impossible to kill but it's very very hardy. Put it back in the tank And these little trimmings, I will check for little baby snails. Uh, there's a mysid shrimp. Come on out of here. I like to save the little critters. Because all the rest of this, I just throw this away. And there's our piece of briarium back in the tank with all the little critters coming around to check it out because it got sort of disturbed from taking it out. In a short amount of time the polyps will come back out, I want to say probably within 15 minutes. Uh, it'll be all nice and fuzzy green again. Hey, that's it for this video. I hope you enjoyed it. And until next time, happy reefing.